All right, welcome back. Mac 2320, we're getting into chapter 12 here. We want to talk a little bit about sequence, sequ sequence control. Sorry about that. All right, so, you know, what's really the purpose for starting motors in sequence, things like that? We, we're going to get really kind of hefty into interpreting what's going on on the schematic here. Okay, and then we're going to connect one up, all right, in a lab. So sequence control, right? Uh, you know, what's what's the whole purpose behind this? So, first of all, we want to be able to make motors start and stop, or start or stop, or start and stop. It could be a combination of the two, in a specific order. All right, uh, you know, the first example being like a hydraulic press. Well, in that case, we would want, you know, uh, the whole uh, point would be to make sure that the high pressure pump is operating before it can be used. So you would want the high pressure pump to turn on first before you could use the hydraulic press. Okay, and then if we're talking about an air conditioning system, uh, you know, we want to make sure that the blower is up and running before the compressor starts. You know, those are all on, you know, separate motors. All right, but that's kind of the whole point. We want things to, you know, start in a specific order and shut down potentially uh, in, a, uh, in a specific order as well. All right, so let's take a look at a wiring diagram here or a schematic. Sorry, that's showing an example of motors starting in a specific order. Okay, so we have all the motors tied to main power, and notice, uh, you know, we're still going to automate automate them through their different contactors. So we have 1M, 2M, and 3M as our contactors, all right, those are specified per each individual uh, motor that we have. So what's gonna happen here is we notice how it's kind of cascaded. So we cannot start motor two ever unless motor one has already been started. Same with three, we cannot start motor three if motor one and motor two have not started yet because there won't be a line for electricity there, all right? It has to, and we seal in each one uh, with its own contact. So the only way for this particular one to start, and I'm going through the control at the bottom, is if you press switch one, or push button one, all right, when you press push button one, motor coil one turns on and it closes contactor 1M. And then it's gonna be sitting there. And then you press, you know, push button two. That closes, all right, motor 2M turns on and it closes contactor 2M and then 3 still isn't operational and then we hit the button for 3 alright it closes 3M turns on alright and the contactor 3M closes now everybody's on and running but they can only turn on a specific order 3 will not turn on without 1 and 2 2 will not turn on uh, without 1 and uh, you know 2 is before 3 uh, regardless so there's how we kind of set things up in order okay we can also do something you know similar this way uh, notice what's the difference here it's really kind of where we've placed the uh, the contactors for 1m and 2m we're still keeping uh, 1m in parallel with push button 1 for the seal in logic but now notice in after push button 2 and before motor 2m we've placed a contactor for 1M. That contactor will not close unless the motor coil 1M is actually running or on or energized, okay? Likewise, the bottom line, we did the same thing there, okay? We put 2M contactor, or normally open contactor for 2M before the 3M motor coil. So 3M will not energize unless 2M is closed and the push button for you know three is closed as well. So there's another way of being able to uh, do uh, sequence control for motors to come on in a specific order. Okay, third method here, it's almost identical to the previous method, only what? We've put the contactors for 1M and 2M before the push button instead of after. So if we just, you know, I'm gonna step back a slide real quick. So method two here, right? The 1M and the 2M contactors are before uh, motors 2M and 3M, and then here they're before the push buttons. That's really just the only difference is where that is in the sequence. It still stops it, right? Because it's still in series. So that part is still in series. That's why it still works, okay? So 
What do we have? Um, you know, circuits that permit automatic starting of motors in sequence. So we can do them auto, right? Using PLCs, uh, things like that. Relay logic, we can do all of that. All right, so we'll take a look at a couple different methods here. If we look at this method uh, on the left hand side, this is using a timer to start them in a specific order. Okay, so what happens is, is we go over and we push button one and it turns on motor one and it turns on timer relay one. Okay, that's important. What does timer relay one do? All right, waits for five seconds and then energizes timer relay one. How do I know it energizes? Because it's a, what? Normally open, okay, and on delay timer, right? Because the arrow's pointing up. So after five seconds, okay, timer relay one closes, all right, which turns on motor 2M and energizes timer relay two. Timer relay two starts counting, when it gets to five seconds, it closes the timer relay two and turns on motor 3M. So we can use timers, okay, in a specific order, and we can use the output of, you know, our energized motor to actually turn on the timer as well and so that it starts working. Okay, so another application of timers as well as another application of being able to do something in sequence. Okay, now if we look at the second one, all right, it's very similar to the first one, only we've, we've made things uh, in parallel. So now, we instead of, uh, we just wrote a separate line, and this is going to be similar to how we, we write stuff in the PLC class, all right? Now we've added an extra rung for each one. So uh, now, if we look at like the second rung per se of this, of the control piece here, 1M is now a normally open contactor that turns on timer relay one. It's really kind of the same effect. It's just where we did it, and it's kind of extra coding, all right? Just, it's the same exact um, timing setup here. We've just kind of replaced lungs in a or rungs in a different location so that it works out, okay? So then that motor contact one turns on timer relay one. It starts counting to five. When it hits five, okay, the on delay closes the the switch, all right, and allows motor 2M to turn on. And then once motor 2M turns on, it closes the normal con uh, the normally open contactor 2M closes, and timer relay 2 starts counting, okay? And it's on delay when it gets to 5, then timer relay 2 uh, closes, and 3M turns on. So same kind of concept. These two are the same concept, just drawn up differently, okay? Now, Another thing we might want to do is stop the motors in sequence. Okay, uh, you know, you do a lot of this with fans and things like that uh, as well. So instead of using on delay, we're going to use off delay timers. So just another application where we would use those. All right, and sometimes we got to use more uh, contacts in our control relays here. Okay, so here's an example of starting motors, or I'm sorry, stopping motors in a specific sequence. So in this case, we're going to stop motors one, then motor two, and then motor three, and have a five second delay in between, okay? So notice that these are off delays. So the motor's running, 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 and then we turn it off, okay? So TR1, timer relay one, okay? That's gonna be the first timer relay that we're gonna use there, and it's five seconds. So when does timer relay one close that's the important piece the time of relay one's not going to close okay until you know the other motor motor two turns off and motor two is not going to turn off until motor three turns off so we're doing this in reverse order so we're going to i think i said one to three earlier we're going to we're going to turn these off in three then two then one right? because we started as one two and three so in this case okay we've got to go through and look what's tied uh, to uh, uh, the 3M, okay? 3M has to open there, okay? And 3M affects timer relay two. So after timer relay two uh, de-energizes after five seconds, it opens up, okay? And then timer relay uh, after five seconds, okay? We impact 
automatically timer relay one goes off and we open up okay so it's working backwards with the off delay all right so we're gonna step through you know the the uh, the piece here so that we can really understand what's going on uh, so that everything that's in operation is going to be highlighted here. So this will be like we're monitoring the PLC program, kind of. Okay, so if we take a look, and it's running right now, right? Control relay, okay, is, or is red, so it means we're running. And if you look at all the control relay contactors, okay, I'm going to step back one slide here. If you know, look at all the control relay contactors, they're normally open contactors. But we're showing that in operation state here, so control relays, the CRs are all closed in this scenario right now. We're running. Okay, so that's the whole point here is we are running uh, in operation. Then what happens, okay, this is the startup piece. We have CR is closed, right? We're turning on motor one. Okay, so motor run one is running. Okay, then, okay. What's impacted here? Okay, we got to take a look at how everything goes. I'm sorry, I went ahead of slide there. I got I got to back up a step. So, what happens here is you have to follow where we are in the program. All right, so then we're gonna start motor two, and motor two starts because control relay um, and one M close. Okay, so also what happens from uh, figure 8 to figure 9 here. Well, once 2M runs, okay, and 2M normally, that, con that contactor to this normally open closes, it starts timer TR1. Okay, what happens when timer TR1 energizes? It actually closes, right? Because it's an off delay and it's normally open, okay? So that's the second step there. That's everything that's going on. Okay, so it closes, all right, and so we know that since it's an off delay, when we cut power, that motor is going, that timer is going to actually open after five seconds. Okay, and now in the next step, since motor two is turned on, okay, that closes the uh, contactor relay and 2M, which turns on 3M. Then notice when 3M turns on, the bottom line on the rung in figure 10 timer relay 2 all right closes okay so now we have timer relay uh, 2 and timer relay 1 closed remember the timers aren't playing a factor yet because they're for turning off in this scenario okay so we got five seconds and because they're they're uh, they're de-energizing they're off delay timers so we're running okay we're running and then in figure 12 11 here Motor three stops. So we stop motor three. Okay, so then it's going to go back through the sequence. Okay, so if motor three stops, okay, 3M opens, okay, and contactor uh, CR opens on all of these. Okay, that's what happens. We hit the stop button in motor three. The way this is set up is so that motor three stops first when we hit the stop button okay why do motor one and two not turn off even though even though the control relay contactor opens we've ordered it with the off delay timers okay so we have off delay timer tr1 and off delay timer tr2 well tr1 is not going to turn off until after five seconds from losing power okay then the t um, then that will impact the other motor. Okay, so same with uh, TR uh, two. So if we take a look at this scenario, then what happens now? Motor two stops. I think I said TR one on the back. I'm going to step back here for a second. In this case, remember we're working backwards. So TR two still feeding motor two M for five seconds, and then one two three four five, and then TR two opens. Okay, and we get this scenario here, and then motor one is the only motor left on. Okay, and what happened here when motor two turned off, the normally open contactor for 2M opened, 
That tells TR1 to start counting. One, two, three, four, five. And after five seconds, TR1 will open back up. Okay, we're gonna do something similar to this uh, in, in PLCs as well so that you really kind of understand what we're doing with sequencing and doing that sort of thing. So you might want to go back and forth uh, and, and watch this as you know it's animated or look at the PowerPoints and kind of go in order so that you can really understand you know how the timers are working with the motors and how they're able to turn on in a certain order and turn off in a certain order. If we were writing this in PLC, it'd be pretty much almost the same thing, only instead of showing that it was an on delay or an off delay timer, we would just use a contactor there, okay? A normally open contactor, okay? For both TR1s, and, or TR1 and TR2. Um, and we'd almost have our ladder logic pretty much done for the most part, all right? So, and then lastly, uh, it, say we wanted timed starting and stopping of these, okay, we would be able to notice, do a combination of on delay timers and off delay timers, and you kind of see how they interact with one another. So maybe take some time, pause this, see if you can go down and kind of figure out how it's turning on, how it's turning off, um, based on where the timers are positioned and how one timer impacts the other. All right. All right, guys, any questions, uh, go ahead and shoot me an email. Let me know, else uh, ask in class. So uh, have a great day, guys, and I will see you in class. Take care.